Thanks for joining me today. Yesterday something happened uh, around my house that I thought might be uh, of help to uh, you who are watching and listening to these videos uh, titled Forgiveness. Remember, um, these videos are not following any kind of a sequence or a particular priority or a particular order. We're just giving snapshots regarding this matter of forgiveness that um, have been helpful to me and my family and things that I've come to understand or been taught by others regarding forgiveness and uh, as I've tried to implement these things in my own family and applied them to my counseling situations we're including these in these snapshots on forgiveness. Today's number three and it happened uh, re relative to something that happened around the family last night. Uh, my family, uh, it was Sunday night, we have Sunday night family dinners together, it tends to be a, a, a very jovial time. We, uh, the whole family was there, by the way, which is unusual, but uh, there were three daughters and there was a, uh, a son and a son-in-law and uh, two grandchildren and we were playing music and playing hide and go seek and all kinds of things. And I happened to uh, at some point have a grandson, I'm sure in my arms, he <laughs> likes to be there. And uh, it's, it, a lot of time spent carrying him around on Sunday nights. But anyway, um, I was occupied by him and uh, my wife asked me a question and I responded to her um, rather abruptly not sure what she asked and I'm not sure what I said but I do have a, a recollection that I was rather abrupt in my answer with her and she went her way and I went my way and basically forgot about it for a little while but uh, at some point um, later uh, I think it was um, after everyone had left she came up to me and she said you know you were impatient with me today and I I thought about it for a moment and I remembered what had happened when I was somewhat abrupt with her and I said you know you're right <laughs> I was I was impatient with you and I'm I'm really sorry about that and I said will you, will you please forgive me for being impatient with you and with the look on her face I could see that she did she said that she forgave me I could tell with the look on her face that she did forgive me I think we kissed each other and we went our separate ways probably getting ready for bed and the matter was over and done with but something happened there that was really helpful and I'd like to describe it for you in detail and see if this is your particular pattern or not first of all uh, my wife uh, followed the advice of the scriptures by not letting the sun go down on her anger. She was slightly hurt by a slightly abrupt answer on my part. And rather than just burying it or going to bed slightly upset, she came to me and she did something that was very good, something that was very mature. She was intentionally not letting the sun go down on her anger. So she came to me kindly and said, you know, um, you were impatient with me earlier today. So that's number one. Number two was God had given me a level of humility to the point where I was willing to look at, hear what she says and look in the mirror and think, is she right? Instead of getting defensive or argumentative or quarrelsome about the matter or saying, yeah, but do you remember what you did? No, I didn't do any of those things. It was a good moment for me. <laughs> okay, don't always have good moments. But it was a good moment for me, and I remember the occasion of holding my grandson, Aries, and being rather shortly abrupt with her, and I, and I admitted it, and I owned it. Didn't blame it, didn't excuse it, didn't rationalize it, didn't say, well, I was holding Aries, and I was doing this, and I'm you know, making excuses. No, she was right, and she came to me kindly and uh, said, I, you, were, you were impatient with me earlier today, and I... I stopped, I thought, I looked in the mirror, I saw it, and I owned it, and then I apologized to her. I said, you're right, I'm really, really sorry for, you're right, I, I apologize for, for what I did. And that's point number two was I owned it, and I saw it, and I admitted it, and I didn't um, dismiss it, I didn't excuse it, I didn't rationalize it, et cetera. Third thing that I did was also very important. Number two, I said, you're right will you please forgive me let's stop for a moment and take a look at that uh, that statement that i made there notice that i apologize but it didn't end with the apology if i apologize that says well i'm sorry for what i did end of the matter but that's not the the way god would have us proceed 
An apology, in my mind, is a way of indicating to the other person that you're grieving and you're sad over what you've done and how you've hurt them. And I said to her, you're right, I'm really sorry, I was impatient, and I was trying to let her know that I was sorry and that I was grieved by what I did. But that's an apology. But beyond that, <clears throat> I asked her if she'd be willing to forgive me, and I did not I did not say to her, forgive me. Yeah, you're right. I apologize. I was wrong. Forgive me. Well, that would have been a command. At the end of that sentence is either a period or an exclamation point, and what if, if I were to end that conversation that way, commanding her or demanding her or expecting her to forgive me simply because I said forgive me, well, that would be inappropriate. And the reason it would be inappropriate for me to say forgive me is because I can't command her to forgive me in the way that God has forgiven her. Confession, in, there's something that happened. There was a sin that I committed against her. She was coming and talking to me about it. I was admitting it to her. I was asking her, are you willing now to forgive me and put that matter away and behind your back, for example. And um, when I command her to forgive, I, which I'm not allowed to do, it doesn't give her the, the biblical opportunity and privilege to say, if God has forgiven me, yes, I do forgive you. And so the, we didn't, I didn't stop with an apology. Thank God for that. I didn't command her to forgive me. Thank God for that. I asked her, or would you please forgive me for being impatient with you? And you know what? I don't quite understand it. There's something in my mind I could say forgive me, and that's on a scale of 0 to 10. How hard is that? That's a 5. But to go, will you please forgive me? Well, on a scale of humility and pride, where is that on a scale of 0 to 10? Well, that's up around 9 or 10. That's a whole lot more difficult to do than simply say, I apologize or forgive me. No. Prayerfully. Um, we want to humble ourselves at that point, and we want to say to our wives or whoever it's necessary to, will you please forgive me? Question mark. Now, what I'm asking her to do is to take my offense and basically, in a sense, put it behind her back out of sight. Isaiah chapter 38 says this about God forgiving us. In your love you kept me from the pit of destruction. You have put all my sins behind your back. Or in other words, Isaiah is saying, you've taken all of our sins and put them behind your back. They are forgiven. They are out of sight. They are out of mind, so to speak. And they're no longer an object of contention between you and I. And so when I was asking my wife for forgiveness, I was asking her to do that. I was basically saying, when, will you please forgive me? And will you put that matter behind your back, out of sight, out of mind, so that we can be at peace with each other? But I can't command her to do that. But I can request her. And there are other passages in the scriptures where, the, where, for example, Moses says, please forgive our iniquities, where it's a request for God to forgive their iniquities. So, um, apology. Uh, I looked at it. I saw it. I owned it. I admitted it. I apologized for it. But then I asked for forgiveness. And then I waited, and she quick, I saw there was a quick smile on her face, and she says, I do forgive you. And in, she didn't have to say, and I put it behind my back, because we've come to understand that implicitly when we, when we grant forgiveness of one another, we take the things that have been confessed, admitted to, and asked forgiveness for. When we grant forgiveness, we take that, and we put that behind our back, out of sight and out of mind. If you want to know a little bit more about out of sight and out of mind, you might want to go back to video number two. That will be very helpful to you in terms of what we do when we do forgive one another, as my wife did to me that night. We went to bed. She was at peace with me. I was at peace with her. And that was a small matter, but the ingredients on how we work through that were very, very important and very, very helpful and very, very biblical and blessed by the Holy Spirit. Asking forgiveness and then granting forgiveness. I'm hope, I hope that's helpful to you. If we deviate from that kind of a blueprint, biblical blueprint that's given to us, because we're proud or we're defensive or we're making excuses or we're angry and we're bitter and we're resentful and so forth and so on, then obviously um, it's not going to go well. 
But uh, if we pray, we see God, we draw near to him, he'll give us the grace to do those things. And I know he'll help you and give you the grace to do that as well. Thanks. Thanks for being with me today.